So, so how did the Sopranos come about? Tell us about oh, how that happened. What a gift. What a gift for all of us, really. Uh, I auditioned. I auditioned for, uh, I auditioned for, uh, uh, what was the name of uh, the, car, the card game? I auditioned for the card Sunshine? Game. Played a dealer, yeah, yeah. Sunshine, that was Paul Mazursky's part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I the show had already been on the air. You Did you had seen it? Or? Yes, yes, I had seen it. And, every you know, you guys were doing it, but every actor in America wanted to be on it. I mean, right. just get on it. It just, that's all. And that was, you know, a feather in your cap, but, you know. And you came on season two, Dan? Season two, episode one, yeah. Uh, I was the first new character introduced. Uh, Philly was the first new character introduced after it became a hit. And I, I never asked David about this. I will someday. He was written in. Actually, he summarizes the first season. If you, He has a, a quick monologue. He talks for about three minutes where he summarizes what went on. And, I, and actually, they started shooting the second season in August. This was cast in October. So this was kind of, I think it was an afterthought. I don't know. I never asked David about it. But, but um, I always felt like uh, I was lucky on so many levels, so many levels. And uh, when I auditioned for it, everybody wanted to get on it. And and uh, first I auditioned for Sunshine. I was disappointed. But now I'm, I'm very glad I didn't get it. And then when I auditioned for Philly, I remember, you know, I went in like I was like the 13th guy to go in. And uh, David David pulled out a, a sheet and he said to me, uh, uh, do you mind reading an, a, a, another scene? And I always laugh about that. I said, no, I'm not going to read another scene if you let you give me the job. No, so, so I, he, he's, and I said, okay, I beat the first 12. Now let's hope, let's hope I can, I can beat anybody else who walks in the room because obviously he likes what I did. So I read that scene and then, you know, a couple of hours later, they, they told me that I had gotten a job and I was, I was ecstatic. I was just so happy uh, because the scene I did was mostly me. Uh, it was me and Gigi, uh, me and Johnny Fury. But I, I had, you know, I drove the scene and it was nice. And uh, you guys were in Italy at the time. And Alan Coulter was great. And I asked Alan Coulter if he could not kill me. And he said, uh, he said, uh, you know, sometimes it's better when people die on the show. I said, OK, all right. All right. But, it but was, at that time, there was just Philly. There was no Patsy. Was Philly, no, yeah, no, no Patsy. What happened was. You guys were in Italy and David came back and, and they were watching the rushes, he and Alan. And Alan, after it was all, Alan called me up at home and he said, I, Danny, I want you to know this. You know, I think actors should know this. He said, David was sitting in the room and he, he just threw his head, head back and he said, who is this guy? I like him. Why'd I kill him? I don't want him dead. And uh, he said, I, I want you to know that. He said, I don't, it, doesn't mean any, it doesn't mean anything except that I think you should know that. And when I got off the phone, my oldest son was making, and I, I was, I was angry. And he said, "Dad, what are you angry about?" I said, "Well, you know, I like the praise. It's good to be praised, but I, I need a job." I said, "I, I would like, I want to work." And uh, and then and then 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 it became uh, talk that I might go back. And then they wrote Patsy in in the last episode of season two, just a quick scene where he brings in the fur coat, and then I had to wait to find out. Until August, so that was a long wait. Wow, that's a and long I wait. My, I told my youngest son I was in Italy. I went to Italy, and I said, uh, "James, if uh, if anybody calls from the Sopranos, no matter what time it is, no matter what, no matter where I am, find me." And he called me in Florence, and he said, "Dad, you're going you're going back." So, that's a good phone call. So, so they hired you for one day as Philly, well, where well, where Gigi two days, two days, two days. So, so as far as you know, that was it. You're done. And then, of course, you were anxious, the anxiety of waiting because the thing becomes a bigger and bigger hit and you want right. to be a part of it. Right. So, yeah. Well, so I was that, happy with the two days, Steve. Yeah, I was no. very happy with the well, two Terry, days. Well, Terry told David, he said, David, you could bring him back as a twin, but you only get one of those for the whole series. Right, right. You so I was, I was lucky on so, you know, so, many, yeah. so, many, so many levels. That's how I feel. And and then of course Patsy ran for forty seven episodes and forty seven. That's a lot of episodes. Yeah, yeah. I did. I think I did fifty three. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I was the captain of the B team. Did you know Tony Sirico before the show? Yes, yes. I knew him from the neighborhood. I knew him for many years, and I and then I and then when he became an actor, I knew him through other people. But I knew him from the neighborhood. I knew Tony a long, long time. Did he have uh, wings when he was younger? No, 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 no yeah. wings. No. He had jet black hair. He was a very, 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 very handsome guy. Yeah, he was a uh, quite striking a look. Man. I've seen some photos, and it, yeah, it's he was striking, striking. And, a, and a tough, tough. Oh tough. yeah, I yeah. know that. Physical. I mean, physically, he was a tough guy. Yes, he was tough. When uh, what was your way in for 
for the character? I mean, I guess you could speak about either or uh, characters, but like, was it based on someone? I mean, you know, you knew the cast, right? So you have yeah. to find something your your bandwidth within the whole thing, right? So what what was your approach, and what what did you want to make these guys into? Well, I wanted to make well, well, Philly, of course, was a loudmouth, and and uh, it was funny that uh, not that my father was a loudmouth, but when I watch Philly, I see my father. Really? Uh, my father was a uh, was a tough. He was a little guy. He was a tough, strong longshoreman. Uh, you know, he grew up in he grew up in South Brooklyn with uh, with uh, all the mobs and stuff. And he was a he was a uh, a Garfield boy. And he was a tough, tough, tough guy. My father. So when I see Philly, I'm shocked, and I always thank my father. I say, well, you know, that you I, I must have channeled you because you know, uh, yeah, I mean, he passed away, but. I must Gar the Garfield that was a tough street gang. Yeah. Right in, in downtown Brooklyn in the back old in, days. Back in the Garfield Street, right? Yeah, Garf yeah they, it was a theater, the Garfield Theater. And they were the Garfield boys. You know, they were they were the gallows and the the Profacis that were down there. It was, yeah, it was a lot of mob mob activity yeah. around, you know, Dyke Heights where we grew up and Bensonhurst, there was all of that when we grew up as well as him. And and so I wanted I wanted uh Patsy to be, uh, first of all, I wanted him to be different, different from everyone. And I always believe that the quiet guy is the scary guy. And so I wanted him to be quiet and, and, but yet to have that violent streak inside. And, um, that was, that was basically. Oh, uh, Patsy was quiet. Patsy yeah. was, uh, he, he was, was different than the other guys. Yeah, he was. You know, he was, he, he was, he, he stood out because he, there was no, oh, the, oh, there was none of that really out of Patsy. Yeah. And you know that they also wrote for us in a way, you know, the, they, they, they knew I had a PhD. So there was somewhat of some of that too. But I think basically I wanted him to be quiet, strong, but yet uh, a killer, you know, a killer. And, and, and they brought, you know, the writers brought, I mean, Chase and Terry and uh, everybody brought that out. Uh, and in fact, the funny thing, funny story about Patsy was, when they told me, you know, when we did that short little scene with, with Patsy uh, when first introduced and John Patterson, rest in, rest in peace, was was the director. And he, I love John. John had such a way of making the actor feel like he made the decision. Oh, and yeah. John made oh, yeah. It, and he just led you. Through. Absolutely. So so he said to me, he said, Dan, what are you thinking? I said, I'm, I'm thinking glasses. And I didn't realize this until about a year ago. I, you know, I'm thinking glasses, John. He said, me too. That's what I'm thinking. So out of the out of the trailer comes a PA with three three sets of glasses, black horn rim, another set that was a little weird, and then those wire glasses that I chose. And so he said, "Which ones you like?" And I said, "Well, I, I like the wire ones. You know, I, I like those." He said, "Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too." Years later, I realized he set that up. He took the other two. He knew I wouldn't pick the other two glasses, <laughs> and I would pick the ones I I wore. And so that's. And the funny thing was, I realized years later too, they were they were identical twins. I didn't have to wear glasses, and I would have been more recognizable without the glasses because I don't funny. wear them in real life. Except now. Uh, do you want me and Michael to call you doctor from now on? No, of course not. Because no. I will. I'll accommodate you, Dad. <laughs> no. I don't know, Michael. He's a little no. standoffish. No, no but, I don't. I don't. I don't I'll, wear my. I'll call you Doctor Grimaldi if you like. I don't wear my credentials. No, I got no problem. What was your favorite scene, if you have to say, as an actor on The Sopranos, where you felt you really nailed it, you really did what you wanted to do with it, and you, you know, well, the um, scene with Annabella with Gloria in the car. I mean, that, that was my favorite scene. That was a uh, that was a tremendous scene. Uh, David David just gave me one word. He said, uh, you know, you're giving her a gift. That was his that was his direction. Uh, her life, and and then I took it from there, and I I I. I I, a lot of people love that scene, and I, I love doing it. And she was fantastic. It was Annabella was just great. That I've was. said it in other episodes. I was surprised they didn't so send Christopher or Silvio or Paulie, somebody you know uh, that comes off more intimidating. I had said that uh, that you know uh, you know like a Paulie Walnuts type, but they decided to send Patsy. You know, right? And uh, he, he 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 pulled it off. He did the job. She she disappeared. Let yeah. me ask you something. Uh, who is your favorite character on the show besides 
Besides me, and I know that. Besides you and Mikey. Besides me, yeah. And Mikey and Tony. Well, it would uh, Edie. Edie Falco, Camilla. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Jimmy, of course. I, I don't think we include Jimmy when we. I think we all know that he was right. our, our favorite. But uh, Edie would Edie would be my my uh, my favorite. And your favorite episode? Do you have one? Uh, the Pine Barrens. Pine Barrens. I think Pine Barrens was a. Uh, I, I think it was the most hilarious, the funniest, uh, the most well acted episode on the show. I, I, I still laugh at it when I see it. Uh, Mikey, you and you and uh, it was fun. You and uh, Sirico did just a fabulous. Uh, it was it's a fabulous. certainly a fun one, a fun memory.